dear friends welcome to my youtube channel mc chemistry and you can watch my previous videos either by clicking on my youtube channel or from my personal web page and in next few series of lecture i would like to discuss with you the basic concepts of organic chemistry and in this lecture series first lecture series let me discuss with you a few fundamental things that is first one curved arrow formulation and what is electrophile and what is nucleophile and organic chemistry studies the structure properties and reaction of organic compound it plays a very important role in making many household items chemicals foods plastics drugs and fuels and most of the chemicals in part of our daily life so it, this is a very important topic and as you know the carbon it can form covalent bond with itself and other elements to create mind blocking array of structures and in this particular scheme you can see a plenty of organic compound can be made from a single compound alkyl halide similarly there are hundreds of organic reaction and we cannot memorize all this reaction and what we can do is we can understand organic chemistry so in such a way that not knowing just what happened but how it happened and why it happened so in order to get understand that we have to understand what is reaction mechanism so next we deal with the understanding reaction mechanism as you know the organic reactivity is due to we can explain it in terms of charges orbital and movement of electron so movement of electron that is a very important part in understanding reaction mechanism and this movement of electron it is usually represented by a special device called curly arrows or curved arrows so in an organic reaction to be occur how does a reaction occurs molecules react because they move internally and when a reaction when a one bond in a single molecule stretches too much it may break and a chemical reaction occurs and when molecule stand itself it never react but when two molecule collide each other or bump into each other they may combine with the formation of a new bond and a chemical reaction occurs and not all collision between molecule lead to a chemical change so what does it mean as you know in organic an organic molecule have outer electrons this outer electron usually occupy in filled orbital or in bonding orbital or in non bonding orbital and these are electron these electrons are negatively charged so there is a chance of charge to charge repulsion that is not all collision between molecule led to a chemical change but how does a chemical change occurs then and usually in organic chemistry charge attractions bring molecule together so inorganic style of attraction is rare 
in organic chemistry. So in organic compound. So in organic compound, attraction occurs between charged reagent and organic compound. You can see here in uh, in by I have given two examples here. Here, this is the charged reagent. This get attracted towards the uh, carbonyl compound having typhoid. This kind of attraction is electrostatic attraction. So electron flow is the one of the key to the reactivity. So the correct use of electron, uh, the arrows to indicate electron movement, there are some rules we have to understand first. The first rule is arrows are used to indicate the movement of electron. Usually we, uh, we use two types of arrows. One is double-sided arrowhead, that is this one. This is usually represent two electron movement. And next one, fish hook arrow or single-sided arrowhead usually represent one electron movement. So in organic chemistry, majority of reaction involves movement of a pair of electrons. So we usually use a double-headed arrow and can you show how can you represent arrow do, do arrow pushing in crescent structure here i've given two example one is acetate anion another one is benzene how can you show your arrow in this resonance structure and in acetate you can show like this electron is moving from this oxygen to here and it become double pointed and this double point trait. And how about benzene? Benzene you can show it is like this. So this arrow is indicating the electronic movement. And second rules. And arrows are never used to indicate the movement of atoms directly. What does it mean? So in this particular reaction, acid-based reaction, reaction of hydroxyl group with hydrogen chloride, you can see that this hydrogen is moving from this hydrogen chloride to hydroxyl group. But you cannot show the arrow like this. Actually, this hydrogen is moving from here to there. But you have to show arrow like this. Actually, arrow are never used to indicate the movement of atom. Arrow only indicate the movement of electrons. So, but it indirectly indicating the movement of atom. So, next example, you can see the reaction of acetic acid and hydroxyl anion, acid-based reaction. Here, you have to represent the electronic moment. Electronic moment is from hydroxyl group to this H plus here or hydrogen here and this OH bond break. You cannot represent this reaction like this. Even though hydrogen is moving from acetic acid to hydroxyl group, you cannot represent this arrow. We cannot start uh, arrow from this hydrogen to hydroxyl. So third rule. Arrows always start at an electron source and end at an electron sink. So what does it mean by electron source? Electron source means a bond or a lone pair of electron, usually an area of relatively high electron density. That serves as the origin of mechanism of mechanism of arrow. So an electron source characteristically interact with electron sink in an organic mechanism. So what does it mean by organic sink? Organic sink means an atom that accept a new bond or a lone pair of electron. Electron sink is what an arrow points towards in an organic mechanism. So here it points towards 
organic mechanism. So, for the release, bone breaking will occur to avoid overfilling valence or hypervalence on an atom serving as an electron stick. What does it mean? So, we will consider the same reaction, the hydroxyl group, reaction between hydroxyl group and an acidic acid. Here, the hydroxyl group can act as an electron source, it is having high electron density, and this H hydrogen is uh, positively charged and it is can consider as electron sink. It is having relatively low electron density. So electron started to flow from here to here. Then this bond started to break. So why this bond is started to break? One reason is it form a relatively stable ion grid can be created after bond breaking and also hydrogen cannot accommodate two, two bond so cannot have two hypervalence so that is the reason bond breaking will occur to avoid overfilling the valency so here i have shown an electrostatic potential diagram of this reaction and this one is hydroxyl group and this one is acetic acid here you can see here the red charts in electrostatic potential diagram or simulated diagram right color means it is having very high electron density so blue region means it is having relatively low electron density so hydrogen is in blue region so can act as an electron C and this hydroxyl group can act as an electron source. <clears throat> so dear friends, I have a question for you and you have to say which one is correct for this reaction, This whether this arrow is correct or whether this arrow is correct and in both reaction and explain the reason. And in summary, uh, Curved arrow, it shows the direction of electron flow in a reaction mechanism and it points from a source of electron pair to the atom receiving the pair. So it is starting from source and it is ending at electron sink. And it always shows the flow of electron from a site of higher electron density to a site of lower electron density and never show the movement of atoms atoms are assumed to follow the flow of electron okay that's all next topic is bond cleavage so this is very important in understanding organic reaction mechanism bond cleavage or bond fission there are two kinds of bond fission one is homolytic fission Another one is heterolytic fission. Now let us see first what is mean by heterolytic bond fission. Usually in a covalent bond broken in such a way that both electron taken by one fragment. That is called heterolytic bond fission or heterolysis. You can see here. A, B. The, in this uh, compound, a uh, covalent bond, during heterolysis, both of its electron will be taken by one atom or one fragment. So B gets one and two electrons, and it will become negatively charged. This become positively. For example, tertiary butyl halide. This is a polarized compound, and this is polar co bond on heterolysis. Chlorine get two electrons because chlorine is more electronegative and it then both electrons. And what are the characteristics of electrolytic fission? It usually occurs in polar bond and more electronegative compound gets both electrons. And what are the products usually obtained after heterolysis? Ions are obtained.
Next one, what is mean by homolytic bond fission? And incovalent bond broken in such a way that each fragment gets one electron. That is called homolytic bond fission or homolysis. For example, in this covalent bond, this bond A and B gets one electron each. Usually, what are the characteristics of homolysis? It occurs in non-polar bond. And how does it occur in non-polar bond? Fission occurs. That should be brought by either heat or light or peroxide. That trigger is needed to break such bond. Then what are the products obtained after heterolysis? Free radicals are obtained. Next, we will consider another important fact uh, uh, term, uh, the reagent in an organic reaction. What are the types of reagent? That is, we are going to discuss now. So, in heterolytic uh, reaction, usually attacking reagent can either bring electron, bring a pair of electron towards the substrate or takes a pair of electron from the substrate. So there are two kinds of reagent. First one, reagent that brings electron pairs are called nucleophiles. And the reaction is known as nucleophilic substitution reaction. You can see this scheme in substrate. This is the attacking reagent. This attacking reagent brings electron towards the substrate. So these are called nucleophiles. Let us consider the next reaction. Here in this reaction, the reagent that takes electrons from substrate that are called electrophiles. And reaction is known as electrophilic substitution reaction. So let us discuss in detail what is nucleophile. A nucleophile means it is a reagent with unshared pair of electron or it loves nucleus that means it seek a positive center. Okay, that is called nucleophiles. There are three kinds of nucleophiles. One is neutral nucleophile. Examples are like this. And in neutral nucleophile, electron, they are electron bridge due to the presence of non pointed electron pair. You can see here central atom is octet and completely neutral, not due to the negatively charged. Here, due to non pointed electron. And also, CC multiple points also can act as an nucleophile. That is, pi electron cloud in CC multiple bond can act as a nucleophile. Example for nucleophiles are morning and water. Second one, negative nucleophile. Negatively charged and it carries an extra electron. So these are the examples. You can see here electrostatic potential diagram. This diagram is all fully right. So it is a high electron attached. And third one, ambitant nucleophile. And ambitant, it, it can attack through two or more sites. Nitrate and this carbanion, the cyanide are the example for such reagents. I've given uh, different types of nucleophile here, oxygen-based, nitrogen-based, and sulfur-based, halogen, carbon nucleophiles. Next, one, another second important reagent that is electrophilic reagent or electrophiles. So electrophiles means it loves electron. So these are the reagents that six electron to achieve a stable shell of electron like that of noble gas. All Lewis acids are electrophiles because Lewis acids is the accept electron pair from a Lewis space and carbocation. So electrophiles are are electron deficient species 
and hence electron loving. Here is the one example hydronium ion and alkyl bromide and carbonate. Here you can see the electrostatic potential diagram or a blue colored. These are the carbon is in blue region. This carbon is also in blue region. There are two kinds of electrophile. No, no, first one neutral electrophiles. And neutral electrophile example is Lewis acid. Lewis acids are incomplete valential of electron. For example, aluminum chloride, boron trifluoride. These are having six electrons and carbene. Only six electrons this molecule have instead of eight. And next one carbonate. This is the structure of carbonate. Electrostatic potential again. And for BF3, this is in blue region and having a low electron density. Next category of electrophiles are positive electrophiles. What is positive? It carries positive charge on central atom. For, and these are the examples of positive electrophiles. So we understood what is nucleophile and what is electrophile. These are the two important uh, factors that we have. We usually play a very good role in understanding reaction mechanism. So when you consider reaction, uh, usually you can see in every reaction there is a nucleophile and electrophile. And nucleophiles usually donate electron and electrophiles usually accept electron. This can be represented as like this. The electronic movement always will be from nucleophile to empty orbital of electrophile. And for example, this is a nucleophilic attack on uh, carbonyl and this is on uh, carbocation electrophile. Let's see a reaction between water and HCl. It giving hydronium and chloride anion. How can you represent the curved arrow in this reaction? You can represent like this. Here in water molecule uses one of its non ponting electron pair. So this is acting as a nucleophile here and to form a bond to a proton. So this proton is acting as an electron fan. The bond between hydrogen and chlorine break then, then electron pair goes to the chlorine atom. So uh, this is the next example, a Lewis acid, Lewis based reaction. Here the electron donation occurs from this nitrogen non pair and this can act as a nucleophile and boron trifluoride this can act as an electrophile. So a new bond will be formed. This get positive charge, boron get a negative charge. And difference, you have to uh, show the curved arrow for the following all this reaction and I'll write down the reason for your justify your answer. So that's all. Thank you for watching my video. See you next series of lecture.